Welcome back to Shaw Spotlight. I'm here with a special guest, Mayor Bill Morrow. Bill, congratulations on winning uh, the mayor and your whole campaign. Do you want to talk a little bit about your campaign? Well, certainly, yeah. Thank you, Janice. Um, yeah, it was an interesting time. We, uh, there was really only a very small group of us, maybe four or five people. Uh, that were involved in our campaign. We, we didn't do anything major. I don't think we did any radio or TV. And I really took some time to decide on whether or not I wanted to, to continue to do this work. And it really wasn't until Labor Day or so that I firmly committed and we began campaigning. So it was really five or six weeks. It got a little intense for a while, but uh, once we made the decision that, that I was going to chase this, mm -hmm. I had a number of people uh, asking me if I would consider it, finally decided uh, to go full bore and uh, so it was a pretty busy six weeks. Obviously happy with the result and, and I'm looking forward to continuing the work. What made you decide to finally go for to be mayor? Well that's a good question. I, I'm not sure I have a great answer for it. I mean I've, I've been doing this, this work for 21 years. Um, after 15 years you know at the provincial level I really wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get wound up and a bit excited about the municipal work again. I think enough people began to convince me of the ability to perhaps continue to move the community in a direction that that might be exciting and that might help to move it forward. I really wasn't sure um, that that capacity existed but but people said yeah it's there you can do it there's a lot of great things that you can accomplish as mayor. I am learning to appreciate that more. I, I made that decision that I could in fact hopefully accomplish some of that work um, and now that I've been in the chair for a couple of months, I'm really starting to recognize it. You're only one vote, uh, but I think you have a chance to try and set the narrative and move the community forward. Do you think your past experience in politics is, is helping you in your new role? Well, I think so. I hope so. It's, um, you know, I, out of that 21 years, six of it was municipally. So I had some um, experience municipally, but I think it does anybody with more experience in any job you would hope would get used to, to some of the to and fro that, that comes with it. Um, for me I think certainly I'm used to people being upset and not happy with your <laughs> decisions and I think it's easier to roll through that once you've had the experience. For people that are newer to it um, they may not be used to the negativity that can come to the phone ringing constantly and saying what the heck are you guys doing you don't get it I don't support that. I mean ultimately you need to be able to set some priorities uh, make decisions and move forward and stand by those decisions understanding that you can't please everybody and I think my experience of 21 years of doing this work certainly sets me up to be able to withstand some of that pressure and some of that negativity and understand that it's just part of the deal and so um, yeah I think in that context it helps I think certainly understanding the ins and outs of Queen's Park and to some degree having relationships there and at the federal level as well I'm hoping can help me to help the city of Thunder Bay through through my experiences and my relationships down there. So I'm hopeful. I, I think it certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, experience, it's funny, um, in most jobs is considered a good thing, but sometimes with politicians <laughs> they think if you've got too much experience maybe you shouldn't be doing it anymore. It's a funny how that works, mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a help. Have you faced any challenges? You've been in the mayor's chair for quite a few months now. Have you had any real challenges? Well, certainly. I think the well, we're in the middle of budget as we tape uh, as we tape this today. We're in the middle of budget. Uh, we've got about ten days to go before, before hopefully uh, we will have ratified. And in my speech the night we were all sworn in, I believe that this will set the tone for uh, the next four years. I've put a resolution forward to bring a little bit more structural change uh, to the city of Thunder Bay to see a lower level of taxation than has historically been the case. Uh, than was proposed to us in the budget that came from the administration. Admin did good work. I think there's more that we can do. Um, and so I think this process is a challenge. New councillors are thrown into yep. this right away uh, without a lot of time to learn process and service levels and what you provide and maybe what you don't think you need to provide. So that's challenge number one. And I think it will set the tone to what the next four years might look like. So certainly that's one challenge. Uh, certainly the, the two reports that came down from Senator, uh, Senator Sinclair and, and Jerry McNeely on the police services boards, the historical work, um, have created uh, a further challenge and raised the profile of the city of Thunder Bay once again. Um, and part of the work that I feel I have to try and do is to work to enhance the, re the reputation of our city. Um, that was not framed by those two reports. It was obvious, I think, to a lot of people that that's something that needed work. 
before those reports came down, those reports were not flattering. And um, so they have just made that challenge a little more difficult than maybe it was before they came down. So, but I believe that's an easy job. It, it's hard to turn the, the narrative around, but I believe it's easy in the sense that we're a great place. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got lots that we can be proud of. I think that people, uh, most people still know that. Um, and so that's, that's, if I was going to say what's one of the other challenges, I would say certainly that's one. Well, I know I find I've lived here my whole life and I, when I talk to people who have left yeah. to go to school or for, for a job, they end up coming back. Yeah. I think once you've lived in Thunder Bay, you appreciate it a lot more. There, there's no doubt that, that if we can create the opportunity, um, that people will come back. Mm -hmm. And it's another, you, you raise a great point because People feel, Thunder Bay, because of its isolation, I feel sometimes that people who live here feel like what happens in Thunder Bay that's negative or that's difficult or that is a challenge only happens here because we don't have another city five miles away, ten miles away like, a, like southern Ontario does. We're, we're a great place and people are leaving and have been leaving small northern rural communities right across Canada for decades. That's the norm. It's why Toronto didn't become two million or four million people just because people from Thunder Bay moved there. And Vancouver and Edmonton and Calgary and Montreal and Ottawa, the large urban centers are getting larger. And so that challenge about out migration for Thunder Bay exists in hundreds of other small rural northern communities right across this country. The same challenges that we have, everybody has. So where we can create that opportunity, there is no doubt that people will come back, a lot of them, because they love it here. We've had some success with that. I think the change in the economy in Thunder Bay, when you consider what we lost through forestry 10 or 12 years ago, and we've come through that and we have positive job growth where we've managed to diversify the economy of Thunder Bay to some degree, which has provided knowledge-based jobs, which are recession-proof jobs have created opportunities where a lot of people have come back to Thunder Bay and are filling some of those jobs. So it's great. And so I agree with you completely. If we can create a positive economy uh, that, that has to be diversified uh, to provide some opportunities for people that want to come back, they'll come back without a doubt. Are there any other accomplishments that you'd like to do while you're in this chair for four years? Well, I think, you know, if we go back to what we all heard um, during the election. I think there were three priorities that came through for most people. It was crime, it was taxation, it was the economy. In my previous life, I'd like to think that there are a lot of positives that, that our government previously, previous government had a lot to do with transforming the economy of Thunder Bay back to what we were just talking about a little while ago in terms of the diversification of the economy. We've, we have an established, I would say, on a more solid foundation, a resource-based economy, even though it's smaller than it used to be most people realize that what happened with forestry 10 years ago was transformational. It wasn't cyclical and we're not likely to ever end up with a sawmill in every small town. But they're solid. I mean, Resolute has a solid presence here in Thunder Bay. They've expanded. They have a sawmill on Thunder Bay. We saw a greenfield expansion in Atacokan. They've opened Ignace. They're solid. The mining sector is doing relatively well. We expect there'll be more growth there. So some of that traditional work, we're seeing the waterfront doing pretty well. The elevators, there's some good activity there. The airport is very solid and doing some work. So some of our traditional employers are doing quite well. And, and solid, I think we need to continue to try and grow the economy through this diversification piece and the college and the university are key to that. It was a focus for me in my previous 15 years, there was so much more I wished I could have accomplished uh, with them, but we did accomplish some, some things. So that's the, the economic piece, we all need to work together. Bombardier, uh, a big challenge, you know, our major private sector employer. We're all already uh, working on issues relative to Bombardier and those contracts ending. And crime is, is obviously, we've experienced a big change in our city in the last 10 years. It's topical. You can't go anywhere where people aren't discussing this, so we need to see what, what is possible there. And then taxation, I would say, and levels of, you know, making this city an affordable place. We need to remember we still are very affordable when it comes to home ownership. Uh, but there are a lot of people that are concerned about the levels of taxation. We discussed that a bit earlier, so. So it, just to finish up, is there any special message or just anything you want to say to the community? Well, listen, thank you, first of all, for, for the support uh, in the election. Um, I would say that it's my belief at this point that people looked for change. They succeeded because I think we have six or seven new people sitting around the council table. 
um, who represent that wish from the community. That's a big change when almost 50% of your council is turned yeah. over. Sometimes I say be careful what you wish for. It's another example of how experience always isn't respected when it comes to political work. Um, but we're doing our best. We, we understand the challenges facing the community. We also understand there's great opportunity here. And they'll get my best effort. I'll speak my truth. And um, thank you once again for the opportunity to be part of the, of the community politically. Well, thank yeah, you, yeah. Bill. Thank Janice, you so thank much you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for the opportunity. Keep watching. There's more coming up on Shaw Spotlight.